Sometimes in uh, man's revelation of creation, you see uh, there's one story that says there was a cow and the whale either became the cow or the cow became the whale. That, and that's called so-called science. Their science is great, and there are many things that are great. But then, but science is dealing with facts, and facts are changeable. But when God speaks, it's eternal. It doesn't change. And you need to learn to enjoy the parts that, that fit in man's understanding but you, you also need to understand the greater truth is what God says. Amen? Amen. Okay. Let's go to 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay. <clears throat> so he made man okay let's go back a little further he made the cattle and things like that after their kind he made the fish after its kind when he came to man though he said let us make man after who after our kind after him so we are truly God's children. And I'm going to get into this later and get show you just to what degree that is. Now that does not mean that we are God separate from him. He's always God and we'll never be above him. Uh, but we're God beings, God-like beings. He actually created this to be that. And there's a lot of attitude today that says that we feel uh, like we're, you know, we're being almost sacrilegious to say that. God created us after his kind. We, let me say this, a, a baby a baby child is a child, is a creation after our kind, right? <clears throat> but it still doesn't have authority or an understanding that's above us. But he is made uh, after our likeness. Okay, we are made like God 
we're not above God, we'll never be above God, but we're like children, we're the little, little lambs of God. <laughs> All right, I, I just wanted to get that clear so that as we go, you'll start seeing it all lock in together and you have a greater understanding. Because there's so much religion, religious teaching, uh, and the religion sometimes negates actually what God is trying to say in the Bible. The religion will be using uh, relig re words that we would say come from the Bible, but sometimes we have teaching that is not what God is intended for it to say. I know I'm just talking a lot round circles right now, but it will all start falling in place. Okay? I did want to make this one point. God made us after his kind. So when it says we're God children, in reality, you don't really become a God child until you're born again. You, you were created to be uh, a, an offspring of the living God. But because of sin, and because Adam brought forth sin into the world, it, it took away the condition that we were and, and then you get born after iniquity uh, and you get born in sin. The word says that, well, I'm gonna show you that. And that's why Jesus had to come and take the sin upon him so that we could be received again by the Father. We're gonna get into all of this. It's going to be good. <laughs> I'm excited. But um, <clears throat> the main thing I want you to start grasping, a lot of times people say, you, you know, when you get saved, it's almost like uh, you join the club. And the club is the place where the good people are. But it's much more than that you not only join the club, you become a creation that's capable of being part of what the club represents, which is God-like beings. Submitted God-like beings, but we have authority to do a lot of things. A lot of people times we run into situations, we have power in the name of Jesus to say, change, light be. We've had, I've had, I remember when we first learned this and I was going to college at Pepperdine and there were several times we ran out of gas. And we said, gas, can stay opera operative in this car until we get to where we have to the gas station. And I'm not lying, the car would keep running. Amen. And it ran until we got to the gas station. And that gas, in the natural, that's impossible. But I tell you, we have authority that people don't believe. And that's why you don't see it happening very often because it's not taught. I'm going to give you, I'm just giving you little teasers now. <laughs> but God wants his children, we're almost at the end. The rapture is about to take place. But there are certain things that God wants the, the body of Christ to start operating in. Uh, as we get closer to the, to the time of the rapture, everybody knows what the rapture is, right? As God is gonna come and take his people out. 
and the ones who are left will go through what's called the tribulation. That'll be seven years of, of hell, excuse the expression. It'll be the worst time in, on earth that's ever been. Uh, <clears throat> the Lord said that the worst place on earth that you can think of and go and experience is better than the best part of hell. The very best part of hell is worse than what we call the worst thing on earth. Think about that. <laughs> There's some pretty bad stuff that you can think of that takes place, that has taken place on this earth. And bad as that may be, the best part of hell is worse than that. You don't want to go to hell. Hell is real. It's not a fiction. It's not something that man has created. It's real. The devil is the real monster. You see monsters in movies. Well, the devil is the real deal. So what we're going to learn is who the devil is, who God is, and who we are. Amen. <laughs> because God wants us to start delivering. God loves everybody. And he wants us to deliver as many people as possible and cause them to awaken before it's too late. People think, oh, man, I don't believe that's a... Well, you can say that all day. But you will believe it when you, when you end up in hell if you don't get off of this. There's no way, there's no pathway to life except through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. You can't, now Jesus was also God this, the, the word. Now, the thing you need to understand is you can't bypass God to get to God. You can't bypass God, the Son, to get to God, the Father. Because you're like, he's not another person that's, that's like God. In his human form, he, he is somewhat but he said he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, the Father. Remember? We'll go into all that later. I know I'm giving you a lot of teasers tonight, but tonight is just the opener to what we're about to get into. <clears throat> and I want you to understand it as we go, because I don't want you to think, Oh, well, that can't be. Is that really true? As you get the understanding, the more we go into it, the more it'll become apparent to you. Because the Word says it. It's not something we're making up. Okay, so... Well, let's go on with where, where we were. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Keep going. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. 
And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Amen. <clears throat> so, Adam had, when he was created, had rulership over everything. And in that power he had, and when it says male and female made he them, he didn't do that until later. When he started, he created Adam, period. Adam was mankind. In fact, it means Adam, means mankind, with a definite article. <clears throat> so, the key thing was that God told him that from the day you In other words, from the day you disobey, death is going to come upon you. Now, he had never seen death before, but he, in the cool of the evening, he would walk and talk with God. And in doing that, he would get, um, you know, he'd get a comprehension of who God was and how he is and God's thinking. But God said, you know, all these creatures we got, and all of them have a mate. He said, it's not good that man be alone. So we're going to make him a helpmate. So I'm going to make it out of him, and I'm going to take the rib some say the word in modern day tech, uh, terminology, it means cell. Whether you call it the rib or whether you call it the cells, whatever, he took it out of Adam and he made the female. Now, the female was given beauty and tenderness. And she nurtured like the offspring that comes from the man or from the two of them. The woman would nurture life. And she still has that nurturing nature. You guys understand that? Women are you got today a lot of women act, trying to act like men, but really there, there's this natural nurturing part of a woman. And we need to understand that and appreciate it. So he took the rib or the cell or whatever, he put Adam to sleep, and... Uh, he said, let's make this woman. She was made beautiful. Man was kind of like the rough tougher. <laughs> Man has, goes to war. Man does the fighting. And that's the way it was intended to be. Although we've kind of crossed lanes a little bit today. But um, when he first created Adam, he said, why don't you go to sleep, take a nap, man. When you wake up, I'm going to have something for you you like. <laughs> so Adam knocked out, and then he woke up, and he looked at Eve, when he, when I, he didn't go around running through the jungle looking for her. It says Adam brought, I mean, God brought her to him. And he said, whoa, man. And that's how we got woman. <laughs> so uh, really it means 
female means fetus uh, that creates the man or the man comes from. Female. It's the male that has the fetus. You got woman, meaning uh, the fetus type uh, of the man is now called woman. So you have the tender, loving part, the one that carries the fetus and has it and bears life through the body. Man carries the seed that when implanted in the woman, children come forth. And so that was God's way of doing things. Somewhere, some way we got some things crossed up and we started having, well, we can't say we ever had a man that had a woman or had a child, but you start crossing roles up where men start acting feminine and women start acting masculine. That is not the way God created it. I don't care how the United States Congress has ruled or any other place, man was meant to be a man and a woman was meant to be a woman. And <clears throat> they say, well, what if you're born that way? I don't care. The words, I mean, science, if you want to take science, is, since you said it, science is, is what you go by, it says that one-sixth of one percent is born with both parts. But even then, one part is dominant. So you have the choice whether you choose to be male or female, I guess, but you're not born uh, with both parts as a whole. Man is designed to be a man, woman is designed to be a woman. Okay. <clears throat> this cross thing that's going on today is one of the things that's going to bring forth judgment from God. It's not God being mean. It's just that he didn't create it to be that way. He created for man to be with the woman and woman to be with the man and to them to enjoy each other but not become each other. Amen? Amen. Let's uh, go, go to Leviticus, start at 18. Okay, this, uh, and Leviticus is kind of like the laws that God gives. <clears throat> this, there's a lot of things we could go into, but we don't have the time. So let's start at verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. He says it's an abomination. That means even worse than regular sin. Thou shalt not lie. He gave a direct command on this. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind because that's an abomination, okay? Need to show womankind lie with womankind. <laughs> that's an abomination too, okay? Go to uh, chapter 20. It says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. So we just gave you one. 
okay, in chapter 18. Now we're looking at chapter 20. Look at verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So your blood is going to be upon your own head. If you go and lie in what we call homosexuality today, it's an abomination. And uh, he said, it's an abomination to the degree that you should be put to death. And that's been God's thinking from the beginning. Uh, the day man in his wisdom has decided he's going to change creation. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW1294, that is tape offer number TITW1294. Hi. You know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word? That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.